Remember how I said I had plans for this thing? Well, now it's time to put them into effect. So this is a Vulcan anvil, which is cast iron base with a steel top, a steel face. Uh, it weighs 150 pounds. see the extent of the damage to the anvil. Vulcans are especially notorious for having damage like this. Uh, I did grind some of it out so you can't see it very well but the corners were all broken out as well as that corner there and a lot of the hardy hole. So I'm just going to grind out the corners a little more to make uh, better wells. Uh, this anvil is the project that I was really wanting to work on when I modified that smaller cast iron anvil. I wanted to do a good job on this, so I decided to experiment with a smaller one. This is something that I had feared with a cast iron anvil. These are impurities in the casting. Uh, they're holes. This one goes quite deep. And you can actually see the transition between the cast iron and the steel. The cast iron below looks a lot different. And you can see the steel, the line, and some imperfections in the steel where it didn't quite well with the cast iron. Multiple places. And this is why the steel face, a lot of times on these Vulcans, it seems, can crack. And you can see it there especially. And there, because the steel face goes across the whole thing, even to the horn. You can see the sparks here are high carbon sparks, or at least you may be able to see that on video. Um, but with Vulcans, the way that they're made, the whole steel top from the heel to the tip of the horn was all steel. And that was set in a form where the cast iron was poured on top of it and they tried to bind it. They were trying to copy Fisher, who did it a lot better. I paused on this part because this is clearly showing what cast iron sparks look like. They look like this. And these are the sparks that were on the smaller anvil. A lot of people were thinking that it wasn't actually cast iron. So here it is when it's prepared for welding. I have drilled some holes in it to provide greater penetration uh, there as well. So I can make a new corner to the heel and the top is ground flat some more and the corners are all beveled. Here I am preheating it and I'm going to preheat it to around 250-300 degrees uh, hotter in some places. It's not a perfect preheat but it worked. going to start filling in the holes that I had drilled into the corners of the anvil. This is going to add more grip into the main body, I believe, as well as try to help spread that heat that I had put into it. This is all the corners welded up with the mild steel MIG wire. I'm going to fill in that corner there. 
and I used a bunch of scrap pieces. Try to leave a little bit of a hole there for t so it can still be used as a pritchel. You can see the little pieces there that I had used. I'm just going to cut those off later. And here you can see that I squared it up. I made a nice square heel and I made sure that the top was all nice and flat, raised higher so that it could be ground down. This here is the face hardening MIG wire. The same thing I used on the small anvil. I'm using it on all the corners as well as a little bit down the edge. Took a while to grind because it is hard and you can see the sparks really fly. This is it after I brought it back to my home shop uh, so I could grind on it without having to spend uh, time at the job. I switched over to a flap sanding disc to smooth out some of the edges and give a nicer finish so it didn't have all of the harsh grinding marks from the hard disc. And of course the traditional ball bearing drop. You can see it's about 90%, 85% drop, which is pretty good. And it was so fun I did it some more. Maybe too much. Here is the hammer test for rebound. Uh, it's comparable to all the other anvils I have. Not quite as good as my Fisher anvil, but it's still quite good. And I'm hammering on the corners there just to improve the durability. And here I switched over to the ball side. And it doesn't really leave marks at all, uh, which is good considering that the middle is still the original steel. This is it. Several months later, I finally got a carbide Dremel bit so I can clean up that hardy hole. And you can quite clearly see where I used the hard facing wire instead of all resisted rust. Now I want a nice square hardy. Uh, right now the hole is actually a little bit bigger than what I ground it down to. Um, but I'm checking here and make sure that it's all square and going back and grinding out what I need to. And here the end result was about a sixteenth over an inch square. Now because this thing was allowed to rust and I didn't fully polish it to begin with, I'm going to use this rotating sander, the palm sander here, uh, starting out at 80 grit and moving it up to 220 grit, which I unfortunately didn't show but there's 120, and polishing it up as good as I could with that palm sander. And you can look at this and say, oh yes, that's all well and good. You repaired the corners, it looks nice, it's all nice and shiny, but the real question remains, can you forge on it? Yes, you can. And with good results. I forged on it until the steel was quite cool, uh, which is 
not what you're supposed to do uh, because it's harder to work and it's harder on the anvil but the anvil held up beautifully I'm very happy with the results and just goes to prove that you can do this you can repair a cast iron anvil with a steel face using regular MIG wire and hard face rod so I hope you all enjoyed watching this uh, it was a lot of fun to make a lot of fun to repair something that was so extensively damaged and I think it made a usable tool that someone can use for many many years so feel free to subscribe watch more of my videos I greatly appreciate all the comments you guys give and I will see you guys later